everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to have fun with metallic puff iron on vinyl or HTV. Isn't this so cool? I'll show you how to make this shirt and a few others to try as well. Plus, I'll share what I've learned about this vinyl during my testing because there are a lot of details to get right to take your project to new heights. <laughs> We've made puff vinyl t-shirts together already, but I knew we'd want to try the metallic version. I've heard that it behaves differently from the normal puff, and indeed it does. In my original tutorial, I said, never press puff vinyl more than once, and it turns out that is not the case with the metallic puff version. So we'll go over the similarities and differences today. And now I have two free disco ball inspired designs for you to try that really celebrate the metallic puff or use your own steps to try out your own design. I definitely recommend cutting and pressing tests before making a full project though. Now I used 100% cotton t-shirts, but you can also use a 100% polyester, cotton poly blend, or a similar fabric shirt. This vinyl will not work on nylon though, so keep that in mind. Now you can cut metallic puff vinyl with any cutting machine. I'm using my Cricut Maker 3 today to cut both the puff vinyl and the optional background vinyls. I have this really pretty reflective rainbow that looks even better in person. And I'll show you how to add a thin outline of Caesar's Sparkly HTV, which is super smooth glitter so you can layer puff vinyl on top. Now, even consistent heat and pressure are very important when it comes to metallic puff vinyl. So you need a large flat heat source that's larger than your design. I tested both the Cricut Auto Press and the Cricut Easy Press, and we'll show you how they work with both. Now, puff vinyl needs a hard pressing surface, so I'm using a one inch thick wood cutting board instead of a mat or pillow. And this is very important to success, all right? I'll also show you how to position the layers using my t-shirt ruler guides, which are in the full material and tool list on my blog post at jennifermaker.com slash 572. Now, new Puff HTV hits the shelves every day, but I can only recommend the combinations of materials that I'll show you today. I've tested some others, yes, but these gave me the most consistent results. If you try another brand, you can absolutely use this tutorial, but please check the manufacturer's instructions in case there's anything very different from what I show you in this video. So I'm going to show you where to get my free disco ball designs, and then we can get started. Step one, get my free puff vinyl design files. First, download my metallic puff vinyl designs at jennifermaker.com slash 572. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 572 and click the link to download the designs. And if you're not sure how to do this, visit jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to download and unzip files. The SVG folder inside the zip file has two designs. Follow the call of the Disco Ball and Disco Fever. Step 2. Prepare and cut your puff vinyl design. On a blank Cricut Design Space canvas, click Upload and then Upload Image. Click Browse and select the SVG that you want to make. I'll use the Disco Ball. On the Prepare screen, make sure it says Cut Image in the Design Preview. Click Upload and then find the design in Recent Uploads and add it to the canvas. Here's how the Disco Fever design looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. Now I want to make an adult size t-shirt today, so this will be a good size as it is. But if you're making another size, I have helpful reference charts in the written tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash 572. Now the puff vinyl does expand, so don't make it much smaller or you will lose details. You can slightly resize the design with a lock icon closed. Now I want to add a background using the reflective HTV, so click Offset. Adjust the slider so the offset is thin, but the outline is continuous, so everything will be cut as one piece. 
Then click Apply. Use the color box to change the offset to a light color. Now I don't want any holes in the middle. To do this, click Contour over on the right side. And then click all the small cutouts to turn them off and make the background a solid piece. Now select the top layer and change the color to match your puff vinyl to see how it will look. Make sure the offset will still fit on your material and blank, of course. Check that the correct machine is selected and click Make. On the Prepare screen, turn on Mirror for all of the mats since we're using Heat Transfer Vinyl. Now select the first mat and click Continue. On the Make screen, select the Everyday Iron-On setting for any of the vinyl options listed and change the pressure to More for a cleaner cut. Use your scissors to cut the first color of vinyl to be just a bit bigger than the design area needed. Remember, HTV has a carrier sheet on one side and the vinyl's adhesive is on the other side. The background layer needs to be normal HTV, not the puff type. These are shinier on the carrier sheet. But for this brand of puff vinyl, the slightly duller side is actually the carrier sheet, which is the opposite of most heat transfer vinyls. If you can't tell which side the vinyl is, just use your weeding tool to lightly scratch a corner. The side that you can mark and lift away is the vinyl. My first mat is the reflective HTV, so I'll put it shiny side down on a green standard grip machine mat. Make sure the material covers the design area on the screen and use a brayer to secure it well. Check that your fine point blade is clean and in the clamp, then press the flashing button to load the prepared mat into your Cricut. Now press the flashing go button to begin cutting. When it's finished cutting, Unload the mat, flip your mat over onto your work surface, and roll the mat back to release the vinyl. If there are uncut vinyl sections, you can trim them without interfering with the design. Just save them for small projects later. Now put the design back on your mat with a vinyl facing up. This will keep your vinyl stationary and flat so you can weed it easier. If you're weeding a design with delicate sections like the stars, Use your weeding tool to carefully lift the excess vinyl from the indents so you're peeling the material away from the design. This helps keep skinny pieces in place. If a delicate spot starts lifting as you're weeding, carefully anchor it to the mat with a rounded section of the weeding tool and lift the excess with your other hand. Once you're done, make sure no elements have shifted. If you have other mats, Prepare, cut, and weed them following the same process. Now the puff vinyl weeds pretty similarly to regular HTV, but just take your time to avoid shifting pieces that could fill in the design when it puffs. And make sure you remove the center pieces from the letters too. Step three, press your metallic puff HTV. Heat pressing is where puff HTV is different than regular HTV and the metallic kind has even more differences. I'll show you the process that worked best in my testing, but know that there are a lot of variables, so I still recommend making a few test designs and experimenting with your process to get the best combination of heat, pressure, and time that works for you and your equipment. I hope these steps can get you started and answer some common questions though. Remember, even consistent heat is super important, so double check that your heat press can cover both layers of the entire design. And since this is a big design, I'm going to use my Cricut Auto Press. Always check the manufacturer's recommendations for your heat press, but just know that you may need to adjust them for your project, especially if you're layering. I'm using the reflective HTV as the base layer, so I'll set the temperature to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius and the timer to 10 seconds. If you're using something other than the Cricut Auto Press, check out my HTV cookbook for more times, temperatures, and pressures. You can get it over at htvcookbook.com. 
Now, puff vinyl needs a smooth, hard surface for the best results. So skip the heat pad and instead put a one inch wooden cutting board or a similar heat safe item on your pressing area. Make sure the surface and the board are secure enough for heavy pressure. Press the shirt all over the design area for 10 seconds to remove any moisture or wrinkles because they really mess with puff vinyl. And use a lint roller to clean the design too. Then fold the sleeves together and lay the creased edge on the pressing area. Make sure there are no wrinkles. Lightly press the crease to make a straight vertical line from the collar down through the design area. Gently unfold the shirt to avoid messing the crease and put the design area face up on the board. Now if you're using my t-shirt guides, place the one with the matching type and the neck with its top edge just below the collar seam. You can also use a ruler or tape measure to measure about 3 inches down from the collar to mark where the vinyl should start. Carefully bring the sides of the base layer's carrier sheet together to find the design's middle. Crease the top and bottom of the sheet, but not the actual vinyl. Align the top of the first layer's vinyl with the rulers. If your design has a main section and then small details like mine, use the primary outline as the top edge. Now use the creases in the carrier sheet to align the decal with the ruler's center mark and the lower crease on the shirt. Then remove the ruler. Pat the empty carrier sheet sections down to lightly stick to the fabric. You don't need a protective sheet for the first layer, so press the entire design area all at once for 10 seconds. If you're using a handheld press, it is more challenging than in the automatic style, so be sure to use firm pressure and try not to shift. After 10 seconds, remove the heat and let the carrier sheet sit until it's cool to the touch, but not completely cold. I found this easier than using the warm or hot peel recommended by some manufacturers. Once it's cool, hold the shirt in place with one hand and lift a corner of the carrier sheet with the other. Keeping the carrier sheet rolled back on itself, gently pull it away from your anchoring hand in a smooth motion. If the vinyl starts to come up, pat it down and press again for just a few seconds this time. Then use the same smooth motion to try removing it again while it's still a little warm. This layer is just tacked down, not fully adhered, so it's okay if small edges lift. Place the puff vinyl material side down on the first layer so it's evenly visible or use the ruler for alignment. If any vinyl is uncovered, put butcher paper on top to protect your heat press and the vinyl. Now press the entire design without moving the heat press for 10 seconds at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius. If you're using a handheld press, use firm, even pressure. And if you're using something other than the Cricut Auto Press, remember my HTV cookbook has more times, temperatures, and pressures. You can get that over at htvcookbook.com. Let the vinyl and carrier sheet cool completely. I tried peeling earlier using the manufacturer's instructions and it didn't work, so be patient here. Then use one hand to anchor the shirt and the other to gently roll the carrier sheet off. The puff vinyl is just tacked down, so it's okay if some edges lift. Just pat them in place. If a piece really won't transfer, replace the carrier sheet and press that section for up to 10 seconds. Then let it cool and try again. I found that pressing through the carrier sheet doesn't trigger the puff action. Just don't overheat the materials. Remember, also, it's not supposed to be puffy yet. We need to activate that still. Now cover the entire design with butcher paper. Then press the puff for 10 seconds at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius. Again, with the same amount of pressure. If you're using a handheld press, use very firm, even pressure for the best results. And then remove the butcher paper and reveal the puff. <laughs> now let's talk variations. 
how about doing puff vinyl alone? If you want to make a design with only puff vinyl, simply skip the offset steps and don't add a base layer to your shirt. Just use the same preparation steps to clean and reheat the shirt. Align your weeded puff vinyl design and then follow the puff pressing process just as I showed you in this video to first tack down your puff vinyl and then press it again to make it puff. Or how about a glittery shadow? If you want a puff design with a small glittery outline, you can do that. Type your name or some word using a fun typeface with smooth lines like my JM Groovy font, which I've linked over in the blog post. Keep the lock icon at the top of the screen closed and then resize the design to whatever size you want it to be. Then with the text layer selected, click offset and make a thin offset about 0.111 inches or so. That worked well for my design. But you might have to experiment using your text and materials because you don't want it to get completely hidden when the name puffs. Now, unlike the earlier project, you don't use contour to remove any of the inside cuts. Keep them all there. Then change the offset color to something lighter to see the result. Then make sure the correct machine is selected and click make. On the make screen, you'll want to mirror both mats, select the first mat, and then click continue. The Caesar Smooth Glitter HTV uses everyday iron-on setting with more pressure. Make sure it's shiny side down on a green standard grip mat. Just remember that your puff vinyl goes dull side down, right? Now cut your vinyls just like before and weed them like I showed you. Remember your base layer has cutouts that you need to remove. And then prepare the shirt just like I showed you and position the base layer. The smooth glitter manufacturer settings didn't quite work for layering, but I used 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius at 10 seconds with medium pressure to tack it down. This works best with a warm peel, so let it sit for a few seconds before removing the carrier sheet. Then carefully align the puff layer on top so you can see the glitter evenly around the design. Follow the same steps to tack it down at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius for 10 seconds with firm, even pressure. Let it cool, then cover all of the vinyl with butcher paper and then press it once more with the same settings. And then remove the butcher paper and your glittery puffy design is complete. Step four, show it off. And there are our puff vinyl designs. Aren't these just so cool? <laughs> I just love the combination of shiny and metallic puff, especially with a fun offset vinyl. So will you give this material a try? If you do, remember this is a particular material with a lot of variables to get right. Getting even consistent pressure is really, really important with metallic puff vinyl, even more important than with normal puff vinyl. The metallic puff is much more likely to look bumpy and wrinkled with uneven pressing. So as beautiful as a big design with lots of metallic puff looks, stick to designs that fit well under your heat press. My auto press got pretty consistent results for the big designs, but not so much my easy press. It's too difficult to get that even firm pressure, but it did work just fine for smaller designs that easily fit in the middle of the press. Now beyond the heat press, everything must be completely dry to get good results. Press any moisture out of your fabric. Don't use any steam at all if you try a tiny design with a home iron and keep everything dry. And even with perfect preparation and pressing, you might still have challenges with metallic puff, just being honest. <laughs> now I tested another brand that didn't consistently puff, wasn't shiny even though it was metallic and was very wrinkly no matter what I tried. So for now, I would only recommend trying the types that I have in my materials list. If you do get some wrinkles in your puff, I haven't found a reliable way to fix it, unfortunately, so trying again is my best advice. It's possible your heat and pressure aren't 
as even as they need to be. So try testing a smaller design that fits better in the middle of your heat press. That's where the pressure will be the most consistent. Or try another brand of vinyl because they really do vary in consistency. Metallic puff vinyl is very fun, but it's not as predictable as other materials. So remember to test and take notes on what works for your project variables. Or if you want to give normal puff HTB a shot, check out my tutorial over at jennifermaker.com 484. I have learned some new things about the material since then, but there is still a lot to learn from that project. Plus, there's some more free fun designs for you to try. Now, regarding care of your puff vinyl shirt, be sure to wait at least 24 hours after applying your puff vinyl before washing the shirt. Wash it inside out with cold water on your machine's gentle cycle and don't use any bleach. The first time I washed one of these, I thought I'd ruined it because it came out flat. So I put it in the dryer on low to medium heat and it puffed right back up once all the moisture was gone. And remember too that we have more settings for puff vinyl and many other iron-on vinyls in the HTB cookbook. With this book, you don't ever need to remember or hunt for times, temperatures, or pressures again because it's all in here. You can get your own copy at htbcookbook.com. Now, if you have any questions about metallic puff vinyl, please let me know. You can leave your questions right below this video or join us in our Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.